opening up to more collaboration. But before it wasn't that way. <laughs> Okay, so let's go back to what it was like growing up. Yeah. Um, you, where did you live? We lived in Osu. Okay, which yeah. part of Osu? We lived in Kinkawi. Kinkawi. Yeah, okay. we lived in Kinkawi near um, uh, the market. The Osu, Osu market was market. right behind us. Then there was a Baptist church opposite Napoleon Club mm. um, with a big football park. So I remember we used to go. But now it's, I think they, the football park is not yes, there not anymore. Then. They built on it. And uh, Kikiriki fried chicken was right Ish. behind us. <laughs> So we used to, uh, I remember going for the kebab, that was really good. And yeah, days in Osu were fun. I, I loved growing up in Osu. Did you have challenges when you were growing up because you looked like a Bofunyu? Yes, every day. Um, every day I got reminded of what I looked like. And you know, talking about it now on social media, I haven't talked about it publicly. And recently, because I released the song and then I started talking about it, it's become something that I'm actually working on as a project now because I didn't realize how much this has affected many mixed race people. And so, yes, every day. Even some of us who are just a little light, light skinned, skinned, yeah, or you dress a certain that. way. Yeah. And then, you know, so um, I was always labeled, always called out. And for that reason, I always felt conscious because I never felt like I was actually a part of the you know, community as such. So I would, I would feel self-conscious, constantly feeling self-conscious. And I still struggle with feeling self-conscious till today because of the way I look amongst my people who don't really see me as, you know. So exactly. it's a daily struggle. struggle. Yeah. But let's talk about the two sides of it because yes. some people, when they are calling you Blofunyu, they don't mean any harm. Yes. They yeah. just are pointing out the fact that you're light skin, you're different, and you're different I mean, from you use them. It as a, a like term a, of endearment. Yes, yes, like a compliment. Yes, in blofunyo. Yes, you, that yes, kind of thing. Yes. But then, on the other hand, that alienates you. Yes. Can we talk about a little bit about some of the, if you can remember, instances where you really felt as though your own people were rejecting you just because of the color of your skin? It goes as far back as school. You know, um, calling you white, and even my kids go through it today. Like my daughter is light; she's, I think she's even lighter than me. You know, and she's a little girl, and she would come home and tell me, you know, they told me I'm white and stuff. Or she would say, okay, then me, I'm not playing with those black people. And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, because they said I'm white. So it's that is a daily. When you are in traffic, the hawkers will 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 call you a different name. When you are buying, they will give you a different price. Mm. You'll be sitting in a salon somewhere and the, the salon ladies will start discussing, yeah, are we going to charge her normal or should we charge? Because they think you don't understand the language. Price. And sometimes, depending on your mood, you may not even respond because with maturity, you begin to kind of cool down. When I was younger, I would call you out, say, hey, I'll start speaking gun, so you see what, you know. But I realized, a lot of people don't realize what, you know, so once in a while I would just maybe respond in a way for them to see that I'm done, you know, sometimes I just ignore, you know, I just say, okay, well, I just keep going. Okay. So it makes you kind of sometimes go internally, like you internalize and you kind of become a little bit antisocial, in my case, because you feel like, um, no, I don't want to go and deal with that today. There's also... My Lebanese. husband is mixed. Okay, he's he's mixed. German, Ghanaian. Okay. Yeah. So our kids are from the UN. Just a note. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's talk about so you lived in Osu in King Kawi. Yes. But your mother was from Jamestown, Bese and, and so many other places. When you were growing up, did you have a chance to and right now we're we're sitting in Jamestown for those of you who are yeah. watching or listening to us, we're actually at the Dio Gratia Studios in Jamestown, the heart of Accra. Yeah. And it's the oldest photo studio in Accra, mm -hmm. established in 1922. And it's now being managed by, is it third generation? Yes, of, of the family that established yeah. it. Did you find yourself visiting um, Jamestown often? Yeah, we visited when it came to family events, family occasions, uh, especially Homowo, you know, when there's Homowo would come in and come and eat the big day and so on. We have families still in Jamestown up so now. So yes, if there would be some event going on um, in terms of family, we, we would come when I was younger. 
But now as an adult, I come on my own, okay. you know, but those days, because yes, this was when we, establishing the connection. Yes, we always came to visit our family and they came to visit us, you know, when we have, and I think that's a wonderful thing about Ghana. We value family a lot. And so we never lost touch with the extended family. Like we always have a connection with them. Okay. So from Osu, was there a point when the family moved out of Osu to live somewhere else? Yes, we, we moved out. Uh, my dad retired from the club and not music, but from the nightclub and entertainment scene. Um, so we moved to Jowlu, North Jowlu. And, and it was very common for Ga families to move, move to that Jowlu, way. like Belingpe, yeah. East Legon, yeah. that side. I, I guess at that time it was also a, an upwardly mobile trend, you know, like, okay, you're doing well, this is a new area. At the, at the time, Jowlu, even the N1, there was no traffic lights, it was a very bushy on yeah. either side. And that, I learned how to drive on the side of the N1, <laughs> on the rough road, you know. So, um, it's uh, changed a lot. In that time, it was very attractive because residential area, you know, and he wanted some quiet away from the loud, what we are used to every day, yes. you know. Earlier, I was telling you about the family that lived behind us, yes. you know, and the, the metal buckets in the morning. The clink, 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 clink in the morning. <laughs> and the words, you, I can't say them, but what? <laughs> Okay, virtually, uh, I'd like us to talk about your father and yeah. his legacy. But prior to that, let's talk about um, you know the alienation of the Lebanese, the Ghana Lebanese community. There was a point in time under Buzia's alien policies, mm -hmm. your, your immigration policies, mm -hmm. where I mean we talk about how Nigerians were kicked out of Ghana because of the documentation that mm. they didn't have. But we don't talk about the fact that Lebanese people were kicked out. Yes. People of Portuguese descent yes. were kicked out. Yes. All sorts of people because they were not considered Ghanaian. Even yes. though many of them were here and were mm. born here even in some cases, yes. you know. It wasn't even their choice. Yes, that's true. So it is true. Many of them were, you know, their businesses got taken away. They got deported, you know. Um, that the good thing would be their extended families because that's what saved the Lebanese community from at that time complete, you know, um, the business the business world for Lebanese here would have just gone down. Um, they had families who were willing to intervene. So the ones who actually left, some some of them, not all of them, but some of them were able to at least get other members of their family to help you know, okay. sort things out. So they may have moved away, they may have started new lives, um, but then it wasn't all entirely destructive. So yes, many of them left. Um, and in my case, my father actually helped his cousin, who at the time called Tarek Fatal. Yes. And Tarek had to leave Ghana at that time. And wow. yeah, so my dad actually bought his company um, from him. And yeah, this is, this is how it went there. How did the community cope at the time? How, how I mean, do you remember mm, how I don't remember felt? very much about that, you know, but what I know is Lebanese community helps each other. And that is one thing that I admire about the Lebanese community because they don't look at a member down and just ignore it. They come together, they rally, they help. So I'm very it's also sure. It's a very Ga thing. Yes, it is. That's what I said. Lebanese yes, are Ga. <laughs> you know, and they love kinky. They oh, wow. love kinky. Look, when I go to Lebanon, my cousins, they all want me to carry kinky in my uh, suitcases for them. You know, some kinky of them are. Bar. Yeah, they love shito and kinky. You know, so, and they love also fufu and granite soup. In my family in Lebanon right now, that's one of their favorite dishes. Fufu they, and so granite. they make it? They make it there. They pound the fufu. They, no, they do the, 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 meat. the meat. Yeah, but they so, eat it. So you're always sending it to them. Yes, we send it to them. We send them shito. We send them, you know, if, if somebody can manage to carry it. And kinky. I have wow. a family that they, anyone coming, that's what they want. Kinky. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me Lebanese are not gas. Yeah, they are gas through and through. Gas through and through. Now, let's talk about your father. Yes. He came to Ghana or to the Gold Coast. So mm -hmm. he was born here, mm -hmm. of course, went back to Lebanon, as you've told us. Yeah. But he came back 
and even though he was, and I'll keep referring to that Aguna Suedru factory yeah. <laughs> where he was working with his uncles to produce the, the thread he used for yeah. hair, he came and he had a dream. Yeah. And eventually that dream materialized. Let's talk a little bit about his legacy and particularly in the music industry. Okay.